All right, I am Katrina Zeos from Cloquet Senior High. My project is on the correlation between video games and academic performance, attention span, and visual spatial skills. So my research is that the effect of video gaming has a relatively new area of study. Studies have been done to evaluate aggression, ADHD, pro-social behavior, but much fewer have been done on the effects of visual spatial skills and academic performance. Positive correlations have been found between ADHD and video game usage. The adolescents who play more than one hour of video game usage would display more concentrated symptoms of ADHD and inattention. Those who also play more often than others were found to exhibit pathological gambling symptoms such as damage to family, social, and psychological functioning, and the violence of video games also was related as it in violence increased in the video game, it was found that their pro-social behavior in males decreased. Knickerbocker defines pro-social behavior as selfless helping. So when a, if one person helps another person with no regard as to themselves, with no benefit to themselves. Gamers who play more than 10 hours a day were also found to have addiction, more aggressive behaviors, and would blur the distinction between fantasy and reality. Players who play pro-social video games were found to be more helpful, willing to assist in harassment situations, and were overall generally a kinder person. Educational video games could also help improve their math, health, and mechanical skills. Not all of the effects found were found to be unhealthy. Some were found that the fact recall processes in gamers was much better than those who didn't play video games and that their problem solving skills were much better as video games offered them multiple solutions to one problem. So what I wanted to know was what effect does playing video games have on academic performance, attention span, and visual spatial skills. And I thought that if students play video games more often, then their academic performance and attention span would decline while their visual spatial skills would increase. So this study was done to determine the response time while viewing video game, educational, and industrial icons. An online survey was programmed using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS to determine the effect of the Stroop effect and mental rotation test. So 36 images total were collected for 8 images for each educational and industrial icon and 9 images for video game icons. Each set of 8 images were colored in the Stroop colors of red, yellow, blue, and green. This video picture here shows the World of Warcraft logo. This is one of the images that they would potentially interact with in the test. They would have to click the green button to make their answer or any of the other colors. If they chose any color other than green, it would, they would have to redo it at a later time and that response time would be recorded. The hope was that if they were reacting to the video game icons that they would then have a slower response time due to the emotional attachment and like distraction from that icon and that video game. So the application would randomly select one image and the survey would record how long it took for the participant to respond with the color of that image, in this case green. The data was then stored in a password protected database for processing. When they took the survey, they were not asked any identifying markers beyond age and gender. Once the program is started, the survey will ask them to answer questions about their age, gender, and video game usage. And then they, once they were finished with all the questions in total, they would then proceed to take the Stroop and Mental Rotation Test. The survey was distributed to middle school students, young adults in high school, and adults through email and a learning management system known as Schoology. Once collected, it was put into Excel, and the average reaction time for all images were calculated. Comparisons were made regarding their category, color, and gender, and age, and relative to their reaction time and response time. They were told the number of questions in the survey and that it would take them 10 to 15 minutes to complete. The risk to taking the survey was that others might know their responses to and each question and that they might feel uncomfortable answering a certain question. They were told that they can stop the survey at any time and that they do not have to answer any question that they deem to be uncomfortable for them. Students, teachers, and the public will benefit from learning the effects of video gaming and that it can have on attention span, visual spatial skills, and academic performance. When the study is done, all the data was deleted, and the IRB reviewed and determined that informed, signed informed consent was not necessary and that it was a low-risk survey. 
The individual privacy was secure and the survey topic was related to the overall topics that the teachers wanted to cover in their classrooms. In the first figure here, it is their self-reported attention across their GPA. Self-reported attention is on the 0 to 5 scale and their GPA is on the 4.0 scale. This graph is showing that they have a positive correlation of 0.333 which is significant on the 0 0.05 level and means that the better they reported their GPA to be, the better they reported their attention span to be. Figure two is their hours played for sitting up to 12 hours versus their GPA on the 4.0 scale once again. It has a negative correlation of 0 0.506, which means that the lower they reported their GPA, the more they played per sitting. Figure three is their hours of homework per day, up to 10 hours, and their English GPA on the 4.0 scale once again. It has a negative correlation of 0.316, which is significant on the 0 0.05 level, meaning that the more hours of homework they did each day, the lower their English GPA was found to be. The figure four is their hours of homework per day, up to 10 hours, across their hours paid for sitting up to 12 hours. It had a positive correlation of 0.354, significant on the 0 0.05 level, meaning that the more often they did their homework during the day, so the more time they spent on their homework, the more they also played video games per day. This is their self-reported attention on the zero to five scale across their hours played per day up to seven hours. They had a negative correlation of 0.397, meaning that the higher they reported their attention to be, the less time they spent playing video games. This is their hours played per day during the summer, up to seven hours, and their science GPA up to on the 4.0 scale. Had a negative correlation of 0.328, meaning that the more they played video games in the summer, the worse they did on their science. Figure seven is their hours played per day during the school day, up to five hours, across their science GPA on the 4.0 scale once again. This shows a negative correlation of 0 0.406, meaning that the more they played during the school day, the worse their science GPA then became. And this table shows the hours played per day slash sitting versus the amount of hours they played. Males were statistically higher based on t-tests conducted by me, meaning that they are more likely to play video games more than females are. The original hypotheses were that the increased frequency of video game usage will be a negatively correlated with uh, visual, no, academic performance and attention span and positively correlated with visual spatial skills. The hypotheses are partially supported because the, the results on the visual spatial skills and attention span was found to be inconclusive, but the academic performance was a negative correlation. Ultimately, the more frequently students reported playing video games, the lower their GPA became, which was possibly causing them to have lower success and future goal setting as adults. Practicing anything repetitively changes the brain, which is how we learn. So the repetitive behavior of video games would cause them to, would cause the inability to focus in a classroom setting since they would be relying on the short-term goals and repetitive playing of video games. Playing video games also releases extra dopamine into the brain, which is what causes the addictiveness of video games. The more often they are playing the games, the less time they may be putting into schoolwork and paying attention into the classroom work. My impact that I'm hoping to have in the community is that parents and teachers will benefit from knowing that this research could possibly have a negative effect on their academic performance and that they might possibly monitor their children's video game usage by knowing this. I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Cynthia Welsh for spending the time to help me sift through data and supporting me through my time on this project. I'd like to help acknowledge Bill Bauer for helping me create the survey and making it do what I needed it to do and collecting the data that I needed. And for Nicole Nowak Sands for meeting with me and giving the survey to her college students and assisting me with running calculations and analysis on the data. And here are my references. <laughs>